Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome once again to the Movie Reviewers 100, a spectacular, amazing collaboration channel on YouTube. Seven of us highly talented and skilled movie reviewers bring you new themes and reviews each week. And this week, hold on just one moment here, this wallet, this is my wallet, this must be your wallet. Why, yes it is. There's your driver's license with your name on it. How did your wallet move from your pocket in my hand? Well, I don't know, but it just so happens that this week is heist week on the Movie Reviewers 100. Yes, so we were originally basically planning on doing bank robbery week, um, but it's sort of become just general heist movie week. Uh, EJ on, um, on his video did his top 10 favorite heist movies. He did a really great list. and. Um, uh, there was actually, I've seen every single one of the movies on his list except for one, which was The Great Train Robbery with Sean Connery and Donald Sutherland. So I was like, well, you know what, I was going to do Dog Day Afternoon, but heck, this is a movie I haven't seen, I should check it out. So, I did. Um, it's uh, directed by Michael Crichton, um, and uh, he is, uh, of course, the person responsible for movies like The Andromeda Strain and Westworld, and he wrote the uh, books that the first two Jurassic Park movies are based on. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, and uh, the uh, um, th this movie is, uh, is different, of course, from the uh, original black and white classic film, The Great Train Robbery, um, which was the first sort of story-driven uh, film that was ever made. Really, um, that was a western. This is actually a movie that takes place in England uh, in the late 19th century. Uh, Sean Connery is uh, sort of a master thief planner, kind of like um, Danny Ocean, the, um, the uh, 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 George Clooney character who gathers together a group of people with different skills uh, to, um, to pull off these elaborate heists. Um, he knows uh, uh, an expert pickpocket, a guy very good with his hands, played by Donald Sutherland, to help him out with this. And um, the woman he's in a relationship with, Leslie Ann Down, uh, also uh, sort of provides a helpful uh, part of the team by being a sort of all-purpose distracted. D distract the men, flirt with them, um, act all coy and pretty and everything like that so they don't notice what the, uh, the guys are uh, lifting out of your pocket, that kind of thing. Um, so the story goes is that um, uh, the British government um, was uh, basically fighting a war and they were using gold to pay their soldiers. And the way they would move the gold is they would take the gold bars out of uh, their bank in London and load them in vaults, two separate vaults, onto a train. Uh, and then that train would travel uh, through England until it reached a remote uh, station, at which point the gold would be unloaded and then, I guess, transferred to coins and given to the soldiers and what have you. Um, so Conrad is like, hey, we're going to rob the train, yeah. No, no real reason for it, you know, other than the fact they wanted the money and they don't like authority. Um, they wanted to, you know, give the, uh, give the people, or give the uh, government, uh, you know, the big gold uh, finger, you know, by uh, stealing their, uh, their gold for their, for their war. Um, and Connery's actually spent uh, some time establishing sort of a false persona of a high society gentleman. He's uh, fr been friendly with the president of the bank and other people associated with the whole um, uh, uh, transfer, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the regular transfer of gold bars on the train. Um, so he's that sort of a cover story. And uh, he recruits uh, Connery and he also recruits um, a guy in prison. Um, he uh, encourages him to break out so he can help with them. He's sort of like the um, acrobat character in Ocean's Eleven, um, the Chinese guy, basically, who can do flips and uh, is very agile, can kind of small fit in small spaces. This guy's kind of the same thing. Um, I didn't really, I wasn't really into the movie until he showed up. Um, it, the dialogue wasn't all that exciting, and it just basically seemed to be about them sneaking into different places and making copies of keys. And I thought, well, this is very exciting. When this guy breaks out of prison, he's got to scale this very, very steep stone wall, which has very little in the way of holds and handholds, and then climb over this bar with all these moving spikes on it. Like, that was pretty intense. And after that, the movie gets really good. Um, Donald Sutherland has to um, uh, steal, uh, uh, steal into a, a shop, basically an office in the train station in order to procure a couple of the keys and that can only happen in a very, very short span of time because the guard is off in the bathroom when, when that happens. Um, and, uh, and then of course there's the robbery itself where Conry has to basically walk along the top, the roof of a moving train basically in order to uh, get to the rear car where the, all the money or the gold's being held. And that really, if there was um, process shots there like uh, superposition, uh, blue screen or rear projection or anything like that, it didn't look like it. It really looked like there was a guy walking on the roof. Not always Conry, of course. 
stunt double, I'm sure, for some of the stuff, but uh, a lot of it did look like Conry was actually walking along the roofs of the car and occasionally flattening himself against the roof in order to avoid being decapitated by a bridge that was uh, passing overhead. Uh, it looked pretty dangerous. That was, that was an exciting sequence. Um, so, uh, yeah, overall I enjoyed the movie. Um, didn't love it or anything like that, but there was plenty about it that I did enjoy. Um, and it was really funny, the, um, the, the, uh, the agile guy, the one who helps him out, uh, he looks a lot like the young Christoph Waltz. Um, but it isn't him. I checked the credits and it isn't him. It's an actor I, I've never heard of. Um, so, yeah, that was decent. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of other movies as well, um, one of them being Johnny Handsome. Uh, Johnny Handsome is a movie that came out about 10 years later, 89. Um, it was directed by Walter Hill, stars Mickey Rourke uh, as a, a professional thief. Um, he uh, teams up with Lance Henriksen and Ellen Barker in the beginning of the movie to rob a jewelry star, store, but they double cross him. He ends up going to prison, Mickey Rourke. Um, and once he's there, um, a doctor offers to help him rehabilitate by giving him plastic surgery. Um, his character, um, John Sedley, is actually uh, deformed uh, about the face. Um, he's got uh, a lot of extra bumps on his forehead and cheeks, and his mouth is all out of alignment. Um, the doctor, Forrest Whitaker, fixes him up, and then he gets parole. And when that happens, he goes back to where, uh, in, to New Orleans, where he originally pulled the job, finds Lance Henriksen and Ellen Barkin and pretends to be a completely different guy and offers to uh, um, help, uh, offers to put them in on another heist that he's planning with the intention being that he'll now double cross them. Um, the reason why I was reminded about this movie is because Ellen Barkin serves pretty much the same purpose as Leslie and Down. She's an all-purpose uh, distraction for the men, you know, dressing sexy and flirting and everything like that. Um, uh, you know, uh, 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 Johnny, the uh, character that Mickey Rourke plays, is like, you know, we, we need, you know, a skirt for the inside. You know, that's that's how they refer to the woman, you know, who's involved in the uh, scam. A skirt, basically. Someone to just uh, distract. Um, so that's a really good movie. It's very, very uh, fast-paced, and uh, it's got a good cast. Morgan Freeman is, is in it as well. It's been a long-time favorite of mine. Um, there's another movie uh, that uh, EJ mentioned on his list that I also really liked called The Bank Job. Um, came out just a few years ago. Um, Jason Statham is the star, although his name might be pronounced Jason Statham. I'm not really sure. I've always been pronouncing it Statham just because it sounds really cool. Um, he is a professional um, uh, a heist uh, man. He's got his own crew. Um, and this is based on a true story, actually. He's hired by a woman played by Saffron Burroughs to break into a bank and get into the um, area, into the vault where all these um, um, the safety deposit boxes are, steal all the valuables out of them. Um, what he doesn't know is that Saffron Burroughs is actually working for the British government uh, and is getting in there to get into one particular box, which has incriminating photos that are being used to blackmail some very important people. Um, so that's sort of her cover right there. Um, it's a good solid picture. It's directed by Roger Donaldson, who did uh, Species, and another really tense Kevin Costner movie called No Way Out. Um, one of my favorite parts of the movie is where um, they have basically a lookout. The crew has a lookout on the building opposite the bank. Um, and this guy basically is watching out to see if any police cars pull up um, while they're tunneling through the wall, uh, getting into the uh, room, into the vault, um, and to radio them on the walkie-talkie. Well, what happens is that there's a civilian who picks up on their radio transmission by accident. And he's like, God, these guys on the radio, they sound like they're trying to rob a bank. I better call the police. So he calls the police, and unfortunately, they can't figure out which bank these guys are robbing. So they concoct a plan, the police, to drive a police car around to all the major banks in London and stop in front of each one and then listen on the radio to find out whether or not somebody is warning the guys inside to get out of there because there's a cop car out front. That way they can determine which bank it is. Well, they pull up to the bank that's being robbed and the lookout accidentally drops his walkie-talkie, falls all the way from the roof down to the ground. <laughs> so he can't... Uh, so he can't warn the guys. And while he's running down there, the cops are going, hmm, gee, no one's warning the guys inside. This mu must not be the bank. And they drive off. It's really, really cool. Um, there's, the plot gets more complicated there, obviously, because it's based on a true story. There's some complications later on down the line. Um, but it's a good, solid movie. I really like it. Um, and so there is my little contribution to uh, High Sweet here on this collaboration channel. Please visit our Facebook page if you haven't done so already. We'd really appreciate uh, comments. Um, and also any suggestions for future themes, uh, actors, actresses, directors, genres, uh, story tropes, what have you, like bank robberies uh, that we could uh, focus on for a week. That would be terrific. Um, 
Please subscribe if you haven't already. That would be terrific as well. Um, thank you very much for watching. Be sure and check out EJ's video um, on, uh, on his favorite heist movies. Uh, that's a good one. And uh, we will see you again real soon. Later. Bye.